<laughs> recording started. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Welcome to the fast break. Uh, Leslie and Teta on hand. Um, we've got a jam pack show today. I'm kidding. Um, I won't lie, I'm just so happy to be here, guys, honestly speaking, with um, two, two, two great panelists. Um, we've got Rufaro representing the Boston Celtics and uh, Goki representing the uh, Brooklyn of Nets. Um, guys, I greet you in the name of uh, Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors, just on behalf of me. Um, but how are you guys doing? Um, I mean, how are you guys doing in your feelings? Not how are you guys doing about your team? We're going to get into that. But Koki Rufara, how are you guys doing today? I'm in a good space, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, Farah. How are you? You came in with so much confidence. Um, basketball wins, man. Basketball wins. Basketball oh, wins. I don't understand the broom. <laughs> why? Why the broom? Just, Explain the it's room. Just great, it's just great. It's just great to be here. It's just really great to be here. But no, man, on 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 the real, this is playoff basketball. This is what we live for. This is why we stay up. This is this is why we live for the game. Honestly, on both sides, east west, I'm just loving every second of it. Paul, don't lie, guys. Paul, don't lie. Paul, don't oh lie. my goodness. Okay, so Farah has chosen to. He's he's coming with the humble approach. You know, now I'm all about the love of the game of basketball. Um, guys. Let's not hold back. Um, today's show is, is, you know, we've got a few things we'll cover, but let's jump straight into perhaps the biggest story currently in the NBA playoffs. Um, we can't deny the Boston Celtics and Brooklyn Nets series has been, I mean, electrifying. I think the storylines around it has been incredible. Yeah. And as we engage in this, I, I had to think about how am I going to host the show in a way that represents everyone. I felt like I was, you know, at a commission and I had to make sure that I make sure everyone gets their word. So what I'd like us to do, we will all perhaps have an opening statement about the series. <laughs> opening statement about the series. <laughs> For a chocolate. <laughs> and, um, and then... We're going to all have a turn to just say something about a game, which, you know, I think we'll maybe go around, I think, three times. Everyone should have something to say. And then we'll have closing statements. I think it's important we follow a format because I'm obviously scared Agreed. that people do, people have obviously brought, you know, utensils to clean. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <you> know, people. <laughs> people have brought <laughs> utensils to clean. Um, Koki, we don't know what she's drinking to try, you know, ease the pain. <laughs> Game four is tonight. And I will hit you guys with my opening statement. If you guys don't mind, I'll go first. Um, yes. In no uncertain terms, I must extend an apology to the Boston Celtics. The fast break, I've been on a show on fast break where a number of us were sitting and we decided that day this is perhaps the biggest waste of talent and youth in NBA. Yeah. So beyond the series, I'm saying just that, I think it was from the end of January to where they are today, I have to say the Boston Celtics have truly shown, you know what they've shown? The ability that like, if you make a decision to do something as a team, if you're talented, it can, that can be the difference to it. So shout out to the Boston Celtics and, you know, my, my humblest apology, my humblest, as one of our, our analysts would say. Um, I think we should move over to Faro with his opening statement, perhaps, um, to hear from him. Uh, and then we will, we will go uh, to, to Koki. Faro, okay. uh, your opening statement. Um, my opening statement is Celtics in four. Um, I mean, oh, there, cool. there, there, there really is no other statement to, to put out there at this point. But um, your apology is accepted, Les, and I think <laughs> I also owe an apology. Um, in, my own, in my own capacity, I did not think Coach Ime Udoka was up to the task. Um, I came at him, I came at Nia Long, and purely because of the fact that there was the no... Wife. There was no change. There was just no change initially, but um, I think he, he went on this long road. And, you know, him being a coach of color, at the first coach of color as a head, as a head coach, right, and at his age, coming from where he came, that is one of the biggest props I can give because yeah. he was going to be there as a, from, like, from the outset and throughout, from, from the fans included. 
And yeah. from and, and creating accountability in the team was the biggest thing. You know, Marcus Smart calling out the team, um, calling out the big guys and guys putting their hands up and 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 then you know gelling and pulling together and creating a brand of which is ours, you know, like defense is our thing. Forget the fact that we've got superstars that can score at any point in, in time. That's been the most amazing thing for me. I mean, no one, no one, let alone us, the fans, could have, could have expected this renaissance. Um, to go from 11th to finish second in the East is insane. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been a trip. It's been a trip. Beautiful opening statement. Uh, Koki, um, I think your opening statement, please. <laughs> um, opening statement, guys, I'm so disappointed in our franchise player the Brooklyn Nets franchise player, Kevin Durant, right? Him coming from Golden State, it was said that he was the franchise player for Golden State. He carried Golden State with Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green. He was the guy, apparently, to carry those guys to a championship, right? Even though they did it before him. And now him coming to Brooklyn, I, with all the hopes... That, oh, okay, mm-hmm. since this guy's the carrier, surely he can do it past the Celtics, the Bucks, and I haven't seen it. So I'm honestly disappointed in that. And, man, Black Lives Matter, you know, in terms of Boston. <laughs> in terms of Boston, Black Lives Matter. Shout out to the head coach. Because I also do, uh, you know, yeah, I, I do owe Boston Celtics an apology, the coach an apology, because... I, honestly, I was arrogant. I was honestly arrogant. You know, coming in, you know, getting Boston in the first round, I was like, come on, this is easy. Because we had we had Boston uh, last last season as well in the same round, and it was it was such an easy series. So I was like, oh, okay. History yeah, but there was no Jalen Brown. I must say, but you you know what I want to say? I, I uh-huh. the biggest thing about Ime Donka is is the, is like. A first year coach generally doesn't you don't see a guy come into the franchise impacted like this this quickly and yeah. Yeah. this kind of heights. So that to me is a very unique experience. I think in the NBA right now, you look at a Lakers coaching job now sitting out there, like you can't guarantee a guy who can walk in there that can kind of turn a team up upside down like that. In just a season. In just Crazy. a season, right? And I mean, also within, like, I'm saying it was a season of two halves. I'm, I ain't trying to even say, like, this guy was like, they turned the switch. But let's get into it. Game, game one. Oh, electrifying. no. I thought it was an electrifying game. I thought we were obviously all excited for the series. That, you know how I felt like game one was? It was a gift to basketball fans. Like, they were giving us exactly <laughs> what we wanted. Yeah, it was a good start to the playoffs. Just- it was right. It had think about the storylines. It was like KD struggling and getting banged up, Kyrie with the chip on his shoulder with the Celtics arena and the going fans. At him. And it was just like, what are we getting here, guys? Guys, give me your thoughts on Game One. I I want to hear from you in Game One. After Game One, what were your honest thoughts? What What did you truly believe was going to happen in Game Two, and why did you think what happened in Game One happened? Um, and I'll start off. Uh, with all right, so game one, I was impressed with the Celtics defense, right? But I thought that wasn't going to be enough to stop KD in game two and game three, right? And then Kyrie had such a beautiful performance in game one. I thought he'd keep it up, you know, in game two and game three. And honestly, game one, we were struggling with rebounds. So we gave the Boston Celtics so many second chances. So I thought come game two and game three... Um, Steve Nash and the assistant coaches would play Blake Griffin more, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge. But <clears throat> unfortunately, we didn't see that. But I wasn't worried because obviously Boston, the Boston Celtics won game one, but they only won it with the buzzer beater, mm-hmm. right? Kevin Durant had a bad game. Kyrie Irving had a – offensively, he had an incredible game, right? And we were leading. And the Boston Celtics only won at that last minute. So I thought, surely game two, should Kevin Durant, and should we also play our, like, our role players, like your Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge. Surely this could be an easy, game two and game three should be easier for us. But, mm-hmm. yeah. The funny uh, thing you mentioned about, about, about um, the rebounding issue in game one, 
is last season, I don't know if you remember, Paro, the big conversation around Celtics was always the size. Guys, the Celtics are yeah, struggling. Second chance size baskets. Yeah, the, yeah, second like, chance baskets. Yeah, Celtics, everyone was always saying they need to figure out the thing inside. Like, inside, they yeah. really, that's where they were really struggling. So, I mean, for yeah. you, Faro, when you, you saw game one, it was on the buzzer beater, like Koki said. I must say, like, that yeah. tightness of that game, everyone could have been like, this could go either way. Like the yeah. way the yeah. Celtics have responded from a buzzer beater, from a game where they were one by one, you know, these last two haven't been like casual wins. They've been like yeah. des- despondent kind of shutdowns. Yeah. But after game one, for yeah. where was your mind at confidence wise? Like, I you feeling? for me, for me, game one was was the big one for me because I always knew there would be a game down the stretch in the series somewhere where one of the two KD and Kyrie were gonna go big. And for me, the big issue was, okay, it happened in game one, but we managed to get the, the dub at the end in the stretch, right? And um, all things considered, it was a one-point game, but we had a bad offensive game. I think Jalen Brown was nowhere yeah. um, until like the fourth. He showed up and dropped like 23 um, in the end. Marcus Smart had 20. Al Horford had a handy 20 points. That old man, guys... That old man is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Um, like he he scored clutch buckets at really important um, periods in that game. Um, and the role players, the other role players, weren't really there to sort of show. So I knew that going forward, um, we would be okay, right? And and we, I knew that Kyrie was not going to have that type of game every single game. I was really surprised with the way that we shut down Kevin Durant, and that's a yeah. major shout out to the superstar number zero, Jason Tatum. This yeah. guy is absolutely insane. Not only, not only has he locked down KD this entire series, and I think for me, it, we, we discredit him a lot because we talk so much about how KD hasn't shown up and how KD hasn't produced, but he's been forced into a corner by a dog. Jason yeah. Tatum has forced countless turnovers on this guy, and not only has he forced him to turn the ball over, he's gone the other end and he's dropped 30 points. I mean, he's averaging 30 points per game. So he's playing the hard defense. He's taking the guy on head on from the front. And I mean, it just goes to show that these are games that we can take apart and, and take away the one-on-one matchups. I think the role players on the Nets have also played exceptionally well and have covered up a lot of yeah. the holes. That well, Kyrie the and KD yeah. Yeah. Bruce Brown, Dra- Dragic in game one, I honestly thought that that guy was going down us. I thought- I also, I also, I thought- Dragic Even game two, game hey? As well. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was absolutely insane. So that was a bit scary for me. Um, but but uh, honestly, we'll, I, I guess we're, we're still talking about game one. We'll get into game two and three now. But yeah, that's that's my big response really going into, into game one. It was scary, but for us to get that game mentally was huge. It was huge, massive. I hear you. So game one was actually the game that you always knew down the stretch playing two great players. You'd have a tight game. And the truth yeah. is you guys had it early. You won it. And now you're kind so you're of just rolling. Comfortable. Yeah. Exactly. They're comfortable. Yeah. They, they, they're playing now through their through the confidence. Game two, we obviously saw the second half crumble. Kyrie Irving oh, and goodness. Kevin Durant. I mean, look, and I mean, I'm y'all know who I am. I have no shame in dropping the name. <laughs> I know one of the biggest <laughs> through, throughout throughout his his career. LeBron James' playoff performances have been highly measured. People would talk about how many did he score in the fourth or in the second half, right? People tend to do that with superstars in the playoff. Like, they ask you, dog, we don't even give a damn what you did in the first half. When it came to crunch time, how did you play? Did Kyrie you deliver Irving, him? Did you deliver? Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant struggling in the full second half of a basketball game in the playoff. Two proven playoff performers. Absolutely, absolutely embarrassing. I must say... Jason Tatum, you know, on Faro's point, it's just, look, this is also what we must admit about Jason Tatum. Throughout the season and throughout his career, I have not particularly felt like he's a standout defender. But he's mm-hmm. found in, this, in, 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 the se- in a series against one of the greatest scorers of all time, effort level that perhaps, you know, I, don't, I can't say I've seen anyone else make Kevin Durant struggle like he's struggling. You yeah. Know what I mean? Both Ky- Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are shooting below 33% for the series. And for me, that's incredible. Game two, I want to hear from the struggles in that second half. I mean, I just, what happened? What happened to 
both Kyrie Irving and 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 and, and Kevin Durant. And I guess the question becomes: Fine, if we know Jason Tatum is playing out of his shoes. What what happened to Kyrie Irving? He was also quite well known as a class exactly. performer. So far mm. from your side, I mean, when you saw what happened in Game Two and that type of performance in that second half, what do you think? <laughs> those were the clamps. Yeah, hundred percent for 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 Boston. Yeah, so I've seen us do this um, all the time from Jan, where a game can be back and forth. But I know going into the third and the fourth, the fourth especially, um, we can clamp a team down and we don't have to score as much, go crazy numbers to win the game, right? We'd been keeping, and I mean, if you look at the games leading up to the playoffs, they were blowouts, man, beating teams by up to twenty. Um, and One of them being the Nets as well, actually. Yeah, keeping teams oh, yeah. below. Yeah. So, so I always knew that was coming. I always knew that that was a possibility. And that always gives us a chance in games. And if you look at game two, us offensively, no one really showed out that way. Tatum had 19. JB, Jalen Brown had 22. Um, but this is where the role players come in. And this exactly. is where I was the most proud of a lot of our role players. Because um, one, being Peyton Pritchett, Mini, mini guy drops 10 points, a handy 10 points at that. Grant Williams, who is arguably our most efficient three-point shooter, and he's a dark horse and people don't really know that. This guy is very efficient, efficient from three. Um, Al Horford, the old man again. Um, and Daniel Tice was, was, was a big one for me. So I'm not really a big fan of Daniel Tice because he was, quote-unquote, the direct replacement for Rob Williams. And, and you, know, you can't just replace the Time Lord. But you had seven guys scoring over... 10 points, um, and no one scored above 22 in that game. Jalen Brown had the most. Tatum had 19. So that was a true team performance, and that really just galvanized or, or put the punctuation mark on, on what this team is about and what we, wh wh why we're such a force is because we don't need guys to go off and score 35 and 36 and, 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 and drop exactly. triple doubles consistently. We have role players in that eight, nine-man rotation that literally come in and everyone plays the same brand of defensive basketball. We have guys that can guard one through five where we can switch on everything. And there's, there's, there's less pressure, essentially. And guys are always holding each other accountable, which for me, yeah. for the first time in a long time, this actually looks like a championship team. Boston, yeah, you guys are defensively, there is that culture that you guys are like an almost all switch team. There's nothing that puts any defender in a, in a negative. But Koki, I mean, for you, you know, look, like Koki, there are people that wanted to come on the show. We told them guys were at capacity. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, <laughs> game two, and let's now talk game two and three all at once, like one go. Okay. Game two and three, everything we're seeing about. KD and Kyrie are responding. I think I remember you mentioning that in game two, you know, if you looked at the stat sheet, you wouldn't see what Kyrie was attempting to do. Or was that game three? It was, was game, game three, three? Like, game three. yeah, yeah. Game three, game three. Three. But the point is, the way that they've responded, because I'll be honest, I think I saw some numbers about, they say what KD does in a response to a loss in the playoffs. I think it's 35 plus points in responses to losses. And I mean, we have not seen KD respond the way we'd obviously expect him to respond yeah. as you rightly say the adjustment you would have made is look at lamarcus aldridge blake griffin um who's the big at at brooklyn um claxton uh, drummond, more minutes, drummond. drummond and andrew yeah. drummond andrew drummond the four-time rebound champion i mean he he's, he's won rebound champion championships that that should have been something that you would have wanted to see as a response what do you think has happened in game two and three and why did like you know what 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 has happened we we haven't even seen a response from the leaders of the team but beyond that none of the adjustments from the coaching staff exactly so and the only adjustment that i saw was game 3 when they brought in Blake Griffin right and for me Blake Griffin wasn't meant to i mean give us all the points that we needed he just brings that energy this guy is hungry you know what i mean that say, like that hunger that we need on defense he's the guy he came in he got a he forced Boston Celtics, you know, um, turnovers. And he got us those rebounds that we really needed in game two and game three. He also gave us points, which, which was a very nice cherry on top. Because our star players who are known for giving us points didn't, you know, necessarily do that. But in game two, game two showed me that we are heavily reliant on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. 
right? Mm -hmm. And our role players don't really serve us as much as that, as much as we need to, which was very disappointing for me because this is where coaching comes in. You know what I mean? Like, as a coach, if your star player is not, you know, is not um, working hard on def, I mean, on offense, then surely why is he not doing anything on defense? You know what I mean? If if you are locked down on offense, do something on defense. Give us rebounds. You know what I mean? I mean, and that that's the difference with Kyrie and KD because Kyrie in game three, on defense, he tried. He was on four fouls. I think he finished the game with five fouls, right? Whereas KD, he was locked down on defense. I mean, on offense and then defense, he didn't even try, right? Kyrie was being a playmaker as well because Penny Mills was scoring those buckets. Seth Curry was also there. Bruce Brown was also there for us. But KD, I, I'm not seeing anything from him. Absolutely anything. But also, credit to the Boston Celtics. I like how their defense is interchange interchangeable because I thought, okay, no, JT is going to get tired. You can't guard KD like this for the whole series. But you get guys like Marcus Smart. You know, guys like Jalen Brown, who can still defend KD. So KD doesn't necessarily have to be guarded by JT. They have all these guys who are so hungry. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. Damn. As a fan, as a Nets fan, I, 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 I still say that the Nets will make it through the series. But as, a, as an analyst, I don't <laughs> see the Celtics. I, I, I honestly see the Celtics getting swept because... There is no way you are beating... You mean the Nets getting swept? Oh, excuse Nets. me, the Nets, yes. Yes, the Nets getting swept. Because there's no way... There's no way you're beating... No, stop it. Stop it, okay? <laughs> there's no way you're beating the Celtics. First of all, with your star player, you know, having so many turnovers, not even making plays. I mean, in transition, this is where KD should be getting points. But he's not even running in transition. He, there's no energy. It's like he's defeated. They ha they caught him mentally. It's crazy. Mm. And like the, I think Farrow made a point about Jason Tatum. Like the difference with JT or what he's doing right now is he's doing both ends of the floor. So like he's 100%. really going off on both ends of the floor. And and that's who you need to be in the NBA playoffs. You're trying to be a star and trying to lead your team to an NBA championship. As a leader of the team, you've got to be on both ends of the floor. You've got to be able to do it on both ends of the floor. And that's the kind of motor that we're looking for. But Let's just, uh, Cookie, you've already thrown out your prediction. I'm not even sure what it was. <laughs> Long story short, guys. Game four is happening this evening. Game four. The prediction is... I mean, but wait, wait. We'll, we'll get, sorry, I'm just saying, for the next two win, they'll oh. need to win four games in a row. I just want everyone to recognize that fact. That's what it requires. But yes, Cookie, I apologize. Over to you. I think you no, deserve no, so the most words. The, exactly yes <laughs> let me just you know express myself so hectic so game four i just want to say i would love to see kd attempt shots because he's not even trying to shoot anymore yeah. right that and as a coach three. Mm. exactly he's not even trying to shoot so as a coach i'm like why is this guy on the court there's so many guys who really want to play <laughs> Oh, but there's so many guys who want to play like take him out wow. he's not shooting he's not defending why is he there he he's you know what i mean Koki. Koki, the way he's not making this, plays he's not making it's plays like, about this, like it's under 15 like it's under 15 basketball and <laughs> the coach coach feels like everyone is interchangeable it's Kevin Durant. Durant. But he's not. Kevin. No, but guys, he's not doing what he's supposed to do. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. And you know my thing is, right? You know what my thing is? He's also getting double teamed. So cool. Like rather protect that rock and pass it out. You're getting double teamed all the time. He's not even trying to do that. He's not even trying to do that. No ways. So I would love to see. <laughs> It's a mental game. Yeah, like mentally, the Celtics have already won. Honestly, right? But I would, I would honestly love to see Kevin Durant perform more. And I would love to see LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin get more minutes. Yeah, so that's what you'd like yeah. to see as a response to in this game. Yeah. I must say on my end, um, I... You know, my issue with the Nets is also this, right? And the story of these two teams is a special because 
throughout the season, we were with the Nets. Everyone, everyone kept on excusing what the Nets were doing throughout the season. Yeah. They were like, there's this Kyrie issue KD. with the vaccine. We, we're not really getting a full version of whatever's happening here. They, this overturn of that vaccine mandate got them access to Kyrie Irving for the playoffs. And everyone kept saying, as long as Kyrie Irving can be in that team in the NBA playoffs, these guys could go all the way. The East is all the way open. And now it's not happening. And the truth is, I must say, if you want to hear my call, hey man, look, the, the, the Boston Celtics since 2017 have been to the Eastern Conference Finals three times. These guys have got, these guys were there in rookie years. I think the Boston Celtics are, are they gonna, they're going to move right on past these, uh, these uh, Brooklyn Nets. And it's going to be, it, this is going to be considered one of the biggest meltdowns in the playoffs of all time. Kevin Durant. And how many games? Going to take, respectfully, I, 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 I'm, oh, Farah, are you, okay, Farah, you're saying clean, <laughs> even the gentleman. Not even a gentleman. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you why. I won't just. It won't just be about bravado. I'll tell you why, from an analysis point of view. Right. First of all, the Nets have not found an answer, and what I mean by that is, yeah. the Celtics have gone down as far as seventeen points in a game. We saw this. I think it was in game two. So we, that was the worst I've seen us play offensively since last year, and I thought that game was dead and buried. But because the Brooklyn Nets do not play sufficient or maybe even just subpar defense, you always have a chance. So even if we do go down 9-0, 18-0, whatever it is in the beginning, I know we'll, we'll always be in with the shot. And with my boy Time Lord Rob Williams back, put the nail in the coffin, dog. There's no answers for that Lob City either. My boy Andre Drummond was catching. It was, it was ugly. It was really ugly. And, and, and the guy didn't play... That many minutes, man, and 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 already his impact. That one log dunk that he had had such a significant impact on the game, and that was the one game where Tatum decided, okay, I'm gonna take over tonight. Drop 39, shut down KD on the other side, and I feel like today is just gonna be someone else's turn to go yeah. off. All we know, Peyton Pritchard could drop 25 tonight. Because please, please, God, please, 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 please. Let's have some respect. Your... Kofi, respectfully, I don't think you can you can ask anyone to not do anything. I just want to say, Koki, you know, I received a few emails. People asked me to really come at you. I, I feel I've approached today with with kindness or in respect. my heart. With res respect. But I won't lie. It, I think it also might be over. Farah's point around the defensive element of it all. It's almost like if KD goes off offensively, the problem is he's not going to stop the Celtics from scoring the ball. And that's, that's it. The Celtics are playing on both ends of the court. Someone from the Celtics can go for 25 to 30, but they can also, maybe they don't, maybe KD does go off, but they're going <coughs> to hold every other Nets player to way below what they would be doing. And that kind of, the net effect of what they're going to put into the game. Yeah, I won't lie. If you have to bet, if I was in Vegas right now, man. I'm all in. I'm all in. And there are no bad days on defense, dog. There's no form. You can't have an off day, guarding the lane, switching, calling. Defense yeah. has no That's what makes it so scary and intimidating. And that's why it's scary in KD's mind because he's like, these guys can do this to me every single night. There's no form of defense. It's just the mentality. That's it. You can bet. You can bet that Marcus Smart's gonna dive on the on the loose ball. You can bet that Rob Williams is gonna get million, minimum three blocks. It's coming and it's going to happen. You can't stop the train at this. And at this point, oh, I've, I've got a nice stat for you since you all love stats. Um, yes. In playoff well, history, in playoff history, right? Any series where a team has gone three 0 up. Do you want to know of 143 attempts? Do you want to know how many of them turn that series around? Zero. How many? How many? Far? It's never <laughs> happened. From 3 0 down, no, sir. From 3 0 down, nobody. Wait, look. Le oh, LeBron was 3 1. In Cavs on. Oh, it's 3 1. 3 0, yeah, yeah, sir. 3 0, it's over. 143 out of 143, you're going to Cancun and you are sitting on Casamigos with LeBron. James. No, no, man. I Surely we can get a game. Because the truth is, <laughs> no, get a game, no, that's fine. But you know, Kyrie does not want to come back to Boston. He does not want to come back to the Garden. You have to win to 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 come from that series. You need to win four games if you want to win it. 
in a row. Four games in a row. And I, ridiculous. That's crazy. Wow. And that mentality that the Nets have, I don't think they can, they don't have it in them. But, I mean, I, Farrah, you know, I, I completely agree with you. Cancun with LeBron and them. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say this also. I hope, and I have no shame in mentioning that, Lissetti Devere, I hope he comes on the show. <laughs> Lissetti, Lissetti Devere be out here on some, yo, like a couple seasons ago, he was calling like, he was like, guys, the Boston Celtics play cheese boy basketball. No one even knows what that means. But that's what he kept saying. <laughs> and now, every time, every time, every time the Nets lose, I see Lissetti Devere celebrating. And all the Lakers fans celebrating. And I don't want to get into those politics and all these LeBron, Cancun, whack people talking all of that. But Koki, you're on the way to Cancun with the LeBron fans and everybody. Yeah, I don't want to get into the LeBron fans either. I don't want to. But the the Lakers fans have the Lakers fans have been fully invested in the demise of the new of of the Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Which is weird. Which is weird because I I promise you, they're gonna also be the first ones. Farrow. Yeah, the Celtics fumble on the way. The Celtics, I, if the Celtics do not at least make the finals, oh, it's going to be a movie. I oh, know those oh. guys coming out. <laughs> These are energy. You saw Brian Tabagi. I have no shame. I drop a name on the show again. You just Tabagi. dropping everyone. Brian Tabagi was like, I'm bringing out the, I'm bringing out the Boston <laughs> Celtics. I'm <laughs> I'm telling you, Faro, lose a game, lose a game, or lose a series. Oh, you're gonna collect from that man. Oh, you're gonna oh, yeah, collect man. from that man. Of course, like I mean, to to make matters worse, they're all talking about how 2018 LeBron would have downed the Celtics team, and they're talking yeah, about and you're like, what the? Come on, guys. Tatum's and and these kids will wait. You know, it's it's. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it. But yeah, they, they need to sip on that Casamigos and let the big boys go to work in the playoffs. Right? <laughs> Lose the energy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Guys, let's move over to the a team that's the second best defensive team uh, in the NBA in the regular season. Uh, my, my Golden State Warriors. Wait, is this my you Golden actually State. saying that this is your team? Ladies? Okay, you, I, you, I, you I, I really... announced this last season when they were losing. Okay. Brian Sabadi, again, put me, okay. under, he put okay. me under the race. I'm announcing officially. Okay. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm a Golden State Warrior. Um, Golden State Warriors... So we're also in the playoffs. So me and Faro, you know, we're still good. We're doing well. We're three one up. <laughs> you know, we're just and you know how the mighty have fallen. Because literally a season ago, Golden State didn't even make it in the playoffs. They lost in the play to John Morant and his Grizzlies. The Celtics lost in the first round to the Brooklyn Nets. To and Brooklyn. look at us one season removed. <laughs> one season removed. LA Lakers and Brooklyn Nets are on their way to Cancun. You know, it's just... This Excuse, is, this no, is no but... Thing. Okay. I was about to say, we're not the same as the Lakers. Okay, we made it to the playoffs. I mean, not that I is an achievement. Do, you guys know, do you guys know that? You know, in the NBA, you know, in the NBA, you get like a kit. There's a special kit. There's a special kit for like teams that make it to the playoffs. Do you guys know that? So, we getting that kit. Yeah. We getting that kid. I don't know about the Lakers. Ain't no way. <laughs> so, there's a special as kid that bad as my Celtics have been honest. before. Yeah, I can't accept. As bad as my Celtics have been before, that has never been my team. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, honestly, honestly, honestly speaking, how the mighty have fallen because the Lakers could not even make the play in, right? And that that is so demoralizing for somebody who's seen the greatest or one of the greatest being in LeBron, right? Fall to that, stoop to that that level that the fans have to overcompensate in every other aspect. And it's actually insane. If you look at that starting roster, if you told me four years ago okay, that four boy. years from now, the Lakers are going to have these guys in your Westbrook, in your Melo, in your, and not even make the play-in tournament. Which, by the way, is a recent addition to save teams like the Lakers, who choke during the regular season and then need just a lifeline to. Even the lifeline could not keep LeBron up. Now my man is there. You know, I just want to say, I just want everyone to realize I said nothing. I just provided the platform for Farah to talk. I don't want to interrupt people when they're talking. That's rude. So I'm not, that's not the kind of person I am. I just want to talk about my Golden State Warriors. 
Um, but anyway, no, on a serious note, Golden State, um, I'm not sure if you guys managed to catch some of the games. 3 1 up. Yeah. They are, I think, and I'm a fan, but I think they're peaking at the right time, which is what you need in the yeah. playoffs, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. But the Golden State Warriors have one very specific question about what's going on with, with them. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, um, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green. They can't. That start. That's actually their best five players. In fact, in last night's game, those guys all finished the game together. But that's obviously a very small lineup. But the question is becoming: Do you think Golden State will be able to hold on? to all five of those guys at the end of the season. Um, and the thing about that is the context you always have to bring into it is if Golden State win a championship, when you win a championship, your stock rises. You, as a player, you can go to any team and say, dude, I'm a champion, pay me my check. If you lose, it's almost like, guys, if we try one more time, we could run it back and really try to get it. Do you guys think Golden State are going to be able to retain those five guys at the end of the season? I think yes, yeah, go on, Farah. Cool. Uh, I, th I think yes, and I think that's for one reason and one reason only. Um, the Golden State have a particular brand of basketball that they play, and the Splash Brothers really own that brand. And, I mean, losing Kevin Durant, right, and this is something, this is a point that we have to, to, have to touch on. Losing Kevin Durant, him being somebody who was in the pursuit of something else wherever he decided to go, for them to come back like this, I think that yeah. the French... The has makes a really bold statement in saying, in saying, we can lose you, right? Barring losing Steph. I mean, Steph, Steph is Mr. Franchise, Mr. Max contract. When we're counting him out the equation, but everyone else, we we will survive you. And I think that's the big thing. So they, I'll call it the FOMO aspect, where a player will realize that, look, dude, this is somewhere where I can thrive. And if they win a championship, you're trying to run that back because it, one of the things it is, it's an unexpected chip. If Golden State go all the way, which I'm hoping they don't, obviously, but if they go yeah. all the way, that's an unexpected chip. And yeah, I must chip, say, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't have said I would have called it even this. I'd not exactly. have to start the season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and they're gonna, they're gonna want to run that back. The guys that, the, if they win this, these are guys, barring Stephen Clay, that aren't used to winning chips back to back in that way. So they're gonna have that hung. I mean, Jordan Poole, like, it's he's gonna want to milk that dry. I don't know how long this is gonna. Look. It's looking like it's pretty permanent at this point. This kid just came out of nowhere. And whether being next to Steph all these years is just like it's rubbed off on him. But it's scary hours, right? And th that's the only team that I feel like in, in, the, in today's brand of basketball where the three-point shot is so impactful and so momentum building, that's the scariest, man. You don't want to be in the Bay when guys have hit three three back-to-back -back threes and three different guys and hit them. It's that's scary to me. That's that's I'm I, I don't know, y'all. I'm I'm yeah. So if they go all the way, they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. Oh, I will say though, I will say though that the Nuggets make them look really good as well because the Nuggets don't play defense. I just feel like yeah. that whole team's built around Jokic. And without Jokic, it's just you think bad. they do cocky defense. <laughs> I think they do. Uh, I think they do. I, I honestly think they do. No, guys. Guys, the Nuggets are playing defense. If you watch yesterday's game, the, the, the Nuggets have the, the weirdest problem. Their MVP is who every other team seeks out when they really need a basket. So they'll bring the ball up. Steph will bring the ball up. They'll get a switch onto Jokic. And the problem with Jokic is open floor up like yeah where, where this space, yeah he's not that his, athletic his yeah. natural quickness kills him and the problem yeah. is he's too valuable to take off the floor um mm -hmm. and i think that that's probably what kills him the most but i believe look, for me golden state is just about the fact that they can also execute defensively and that's the biggest reason that they could attempt to go far but i want to ask you guys this and this is actually now the context now that we've covered boston we covered a little bit of golden state guys there's a number of injuries in both conferences where uh -huh. I would have started with this playoffs, I <clears throat> made it. Things have changed now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Suns, yo. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. The Suns are dead. <laughs> and the Bucks, bro. Yeah. So I'll be honest. 
and I'm going to speak as a Golden State fan. When I saw D Book go out, I said, "Oh, we just going to the finals, aren't you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly because exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was like, and, I, and, I have no shame in admitting it. The universe has conspired, and I hope yeah. people. I, I pray <laughs> for like. Like, thank you. But yeah, all I'm saying but is like, I was. This is of this is Golden State. Yeah. I'm scared of the Suns, but the truth is, you guys like, cut a check, man. You gone. Like D book yeah. <laughs> gone to me. I know that. Yeah. Like we pretty much we got a clear line of sight towards the NBA Finals in the East. This is also another the same thing, thing with I, Celtics. I wanted yes, and I wanted to say this that for the Celtics, y'all finna go because guys, you see Chris Middleton gone down, yep. Larry gone down, yep. and I'm like yo, Come those on. to me were right? those are the only teams like, that I was like could even put some kind of... I mean, if those two players are gone in those teams, I must say, the Bucks without three-point shooting. I mean, Giannis, really, you can't dunk it all day. Yeah, dude. You know it's what so mean? funny I, how we're not seeing 76ers. Can, can I point out that that is what karma, that's what karma runs to you? Because the Bucks definitely ducked the Nets in game one. They the last game of the season to duck the Nets. And... I don't want to say that, you know, the, the, the basketball gods are acting in the way that the gods, basketball gods usually do. <laughs> that's what when you're soft, you are brittle and you break easy and you, catch, and you catch injuries, you know. And I know what it's like to play under the guise of an injury because we didn't have Rob Williams. But him coming back and Middleton on his way out, um, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, man. And give me Philly, even. People are talking a lot about Joel and B. Yeah, and, I, oh, I'm not seeing Philly, guys. It's so crazy. I don't see that oh, team. Like, guys, I don't yeah, either. <laughs> my, 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 my problem with, <clears throat> my cap with Philly is, I'm saying no matter what they do, I still don't see them. I, I, like, <laughs> I don't think there's anything they because can do. Because James Harden is yeah. there. <laughs> That's the culture with James Harden. You just know that something's going to break. The problem is there's too much data about James Harden in the NBA playoffs that lets you know it's too overwhelming for you to yeah. ignore yeah. that. You can't you and can't just ignore it. It's hard. Just ignore it. And yeah. uh, this is why I'll say Joel Embiid, I almost feel bad for him because yes, there was a chance for you in this environment. And I think an, an efficient Philly could have been a decent matchup against Boston. But mm. all I'll tell you is Guys, guys, all I'm saying is this. If Marcus Smart <laughs> and Jason Tatum are shutting down Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and KD. what, do you, think they're gonna, fun, what yeah. do you think they're going to do with James, James? What do you think they're going to do with Harden? <laughs> James Harden. James Harden's going to collect, put the clamps on him. The For clamps. me, just anyone in the, the East. If you can shut down KD and Kyrie, you're good to go in the East. Like, now you're flowing. Yeah. I think Boston, like I said, since 2017, Boston made the finals, I mean, the Eastern Conference semifinals, I mean, Eastern Conference finals, sorry, three times. I, I, I think the first two times, you know, they encountered the king. <laughs> Goddamn. But now, I mean, um, you know, Oaks in Cancun. And, uh, you, you know, for Boston, this is this this might be it. And if, if yeah, look, yeah. My, call, my call is a GSW, Golden State Warriors, Boston Celtics. And Celtics final. And what a final I agree. it will be. <laughs> I agree, and then for me, GS Dub to win it all. I don't see go, uh, Celtics. Really? Going through. That's I, cool. okay. I am a Golden State fan, but you're arriving with malice. That's malice in your heart. <laughs> no, I, look, man. I, for me, I won't talk about the finals because every single interview Marcus Smart has had, he's talked about the next game and the next possession, and there that's what we're finna take care of right now. Um, I'm not going to look at the finals. We'll get there when we yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, you're such a you, you're like you're such a you're such a Celtic. Like I can I, you're just such yeah. a Celtic. Even and your energy, well, I, yeah. Because yeah, because back in my day when I was a Laker, I used to hate the Celtics because the Paul Pierce, Kobe Bryant, you know, debacles and the, the those series. <laughs> but like I just see the Celtic culture. Like they always just like next game, next game. Nah, we just always grinding. We're always in the grind house. <laughs> We're always working. <laughs> <We're in the laughs> <CD guy. laughs> Right now, we got KD tonight. That's all I'm going to focus on. We'll talk about the next series when we get there. But if I'm to talk media about... Media training. This is media KD training. And why I think we've got, we've got a chance against them is... I mean, we, we play good switch defense. And I think that helps oh. us a lot when you're playing against perimeter players that can't pull up from virtually anywhere. And if you can lock up the guy bringing up the ball, being Marcus Smart, playing that hardcore defense, then we're in with the shout. 
and we've got presence and size inside and we can guard one through five so that, that always gives us him with the shout but let's 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 clean the house first let's oh my god let's let's do this first <laughs> i think i think on that note uh <laughs> we can uh, wrap up the show everyone thank you so much for joining us Rafaro, Koki, thank you so much guys really appreciate it uh, Koki, I personally feel we really, you know, you know, took it easy on you. There was, there might be some malice in the comments, you know, when we dropped the show, but whatever. But um, guys, thank you so much for joining us on Fast Break. Uh, checking out, please like, follow, subscribe, and we will see you on. We'll see you next the week. Next we'll show. definitely see you next week. Oh. We'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. Peace.